on uh, Sunday coffee break and Happy New Year. Uh, first coffee break of the year. Uh, got one in last weekend on uh, New Year's Eve and <clears throat> so now we're into the new year. 2024. I uh, hope everybody had a had a safe New Year's and had a good New Year's. Everybody got their football in. <laughs> uh, probably could get about 12 hours a day of football if you wanted it. If that's what you like to do is watch football on New Year's. But yeah, it was pretty good New Year's. Quiet. Just the way I like it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, um... Let's see, what's going on? Uh, I, 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 bleh. I didn't set up the website altogether. When I got all the way through it and got everything ready to, uh, to publish it, uh, they wanted money. So I decided not to, not to go that route. I'll put some of my affiliates in the description. Uh, not all of them, because <clears throat> it, it'll be just way too much. We'll see what it's like when I uh, when I start working on that some more. Uh, I have a couple of them down there now. Uh, All True Stick Joe, uh, which is coffee, a veteran-owned coffee company, and 3D Maker Pro that makes a lot of really good scanners for your 3D printer and for just 3D, 3D scanning, period, if you're doing a 3D project where you need to scan in a 3D object or character or anything like that you can their their scanners are really excellent for that plus like I said you can uh, scan them in for 3D printing uh, I have a new link down there it'll be the first one on the top which is uh, the new swag for for retro gaming with hopper the channel uh, I have some I have t-shirts on there sweatshirts uh, coffee mugs, stickers. Um, I'm working on some other stuff to put on uh, on the, on there as well. So if you want want to support the channel that way, you can uh, click on that link and check out the check out my merchandise. Uh, uh, I didn't put hats. Um, I'm not a hat person. Uh, very seldom do I wear a hat, you know, if, if my head's cold, you know, I just, I, you see me in videos, I'll have my hoodie up, and I live in hoodies during the winter, a hoodie jacket, and a hoodie pullover underneath, and a heavy shirt underneath that, so I, I always have a hood, so I can pull it up if my head or my ears get cold, I don't like hats. Me and hats don't get along. So I didn't put hats on there. Uh, I may, may design and put a hat on there. I'm not sure yet. Uh, along with um, can cozies, koozies, koozies. Uh, I don't, I'm not a, I don't know how many people like them. I mean, they're cheap enough, but, you know, it, I don't know about that either. But there's a lot of different stuff I can do, you know, bags. Uh, canvas bags. Uh, I was looking, I was hoping there was a toolbox. I could do toolboxes. That would be pretty cool too. But whatever. I'll work it out. Uh, I'm the one who has to do all that stuff on my own. Uh, I'm the only one that works on this channel uh, as far as working on everything, doing videos, doing uh, uh, online stuff. Uh, I'm getting into into the online stuff more and more to try and help support the channel so we can grow and keep moving forward with stuff. Uh, speaking of moving forward with stuff, we uh, I'm working on Scorpion. Uh, we started out uh, with Scorpion on Wednesday. Uh, that was tearing down the play field and getting it cleaned, getting all the mildew cleaned off of it and getting it ready. Uh, yesterday was uh, clear coating the play field and getting it all nice and shiny and ready to go again. Uh, I didn't have enough clear coat on it the first time so I had to put 
so I stripped it back down with steel wool, you know, roughed it up real good, cleaned it all up, and then clear coat, put two more coats of clear coat on it. And that, that'll really help it out. Uh, it looks a lot better. Um, I put the play field back together without uh, video on it because, you know, if you want to see me put that play field together, it's, you know, back on my playlist, actually. I'm putting this right on with a Scorpion playlist, the 1980 Williams Scorpion. That'll be, that playlist is, uh, this playlist will be right there with it. It's all together, one playlist, whatever. So if you want to see me put the play field together and put all the LEDs in it, you can check that out and check it, go back and look at that. And then I got my project done for Scorpion. Uh, it It's coming up this week. Yeah, I have two more Scorpions. Uh, let's see the... Nope, yeah, two more, one yesterday, so I have one left, and that one, it's uh, posted, or uploaded, let's see, tear it down, we cleaned it all up, uh, we, and then we clear coated it, and that, oh, yeah, and then we started putting the stuff back together under the play field, and uh, briefly touched on uh, the drop target bank. Uh, Saturday will be the drop target bank. Uh, what you see in the background on my computer is uh, is the the new part I designed for the drop targets. Uh, the the sliders for the Williams drop drop targets blow out real easy. Uh, there's six of them in this drop target bank. Uh, there's there was only one of them that was any good. So instead of just designing five, I did all six, which is this little guy here. And I got it all put together. And, and there she is with the new, new parts in it. So that's working. Uh, I'm not completely done with Scorpion as far as uh, I don't have the board set working in it yet so we can't uh, mount this in and make sure it's going to work. I mean it, it drops and everything and the, and the horseshoe contacts are touching the boards and all that so we shouldn't have any problems. i got to do a little wiring on it and get it finished up and put back in and then hopefully We'll get started the following week on the board set because that's what we're going to be down to is working on the board set and getting it back up and running and then the back glass. I'll do the back glass last just because uh, not everybody wants to watch me um, paint a back glass and clear coat it. So we'll, we'll do that one last and then we'll stick it in and we'll play Scorpion. That's the plan anyway, as long as nothing happens uh, along that line. Uh, I have some other stuff in the works that I want to do, and we'll continue on with that stuff as well with the 3D printer. Uh, electronics, I don't have much going on as far as electronics go. I do have a couple game systems I want to uh, put up on the bench and work on them. Uh, so we, you know, I'd like to just kind of finish up Scorpion and then start start with the other stuff afterwards Just because uh, I'm really proud of <laughs> this one <laughs> so But I may do something in there somewhere. I don't know Like I said, I'd rather just uh, let you see what I did here with the drop targets uh, I didn't show you to me. I didn't show you me designing them and working with the CAD program. So if you're, you know, you wanted to see that, then um, you know, leave me a comment and I'll I'll gladly make a video of uh, sitting down and working with the CAD program and and putting that piece all together. So we, you know, so somebody else if they want to do it or or not. Uh, I still had to do a few alterations on it because it's. 
it's not perfect and neither were the ones I took out but I, ha I did a little tweaking here and there and they work just fine but look forward to that video that'll be a good that's a decent video uh, back to the merchandise I'm, I'm gonna jump around a little bit back and forth here if you don't mind uh, I I really wanted to set up the website so I could you know just do all the affiliates but you know that that, that didn't come out didn't come to furious and so I kind of went another route with the with the merchandise uh, I know I don't have the views and the subscriber count for you know really good merchant you know sales on merchandise but you know it's a, I got to get it started and I get it started now and then we can I can move forward with it uh, it's also on other it's on at st at st e s t y and I'm also going to be setting up a eBay store with it too uh, I wanted to, I was going to do Shopify, but they, they want too much for Shopify. They want like 30 bucks a month for Shopify, so, you know, I'll poop on them. I'll, I'll do the, do the free routes for now until things get better, and then I'll, and then I can, you know, yeah, you know. But, uh, so the merchandise, yeah. You know, if there's something you want to see me uh, design and make uh, and put on the merchandise site, let me know. Uh, gladly, I'm always up for ideas on, on that type of stuff if somebody's looking for something. Like I said, I have uh, hoodies, hoodie sweatshirts, regular sweatshirts and t-shirts, uh, two styles of coffee mugs, uh, one with uh, Sunday coffee break, one for Sunday Coffee Break and one for Retro Gaming with Hopper. And plus I have stickers. Uh, that's that's where I, as far as I went to get it going. And then this uh, this project with this uh, little, little piece took uh, about three days of my time this week. Uh, sitting, seat time in front of the computer uh, working on it so I could get it right. Uh, this was... This was attempt number one, and, you know, I was off a little too much as far as my screw holes and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, it it's a lot of fun sitting in front of the computer uh, working with the CAD program. You know, it gets frustrating at times, but I, I enjoy it because when you're, when you're done and you have a working part, you feel so good about what you just did. You know, it kind of makes you think, well, you know, there's other pieces on some of the really old machines that are broke that you can reproduce if you have the part. You know, just by sitting down with your digital mic or your regular mics and measuring up stuff and putting it in the pro, you know, and start designing it. That takes time, patience, and fortuity. <laughs> but it come out good. Worked out really well. I was really pleased. I'll really be pleased when it's in the machine and it's working. But right now it uh, they, it pushes them up. They they stay up. You, hit them, they go down, you're touching the contact plate, so it shouldn't have any problems. Okay, uh, I run my mouth for a little bit here. I'm going to take, take a break, and then I'll come back and we'll talk some more. This week coming, uh, I got the got Scorpion, like I said, play field's done. Uh, I'm going to pull the board set, and I'll be working on the board set this week. Uh, hopefully, I'll have that resolved, and I can give you an update on Sunday when that, next Sunday when that will be out. <coughs> like I said, I, I had, I talked to other people, and they said it's fine to run LEDs in the 
Williams System 6, so that's what I'm doing. I put all my LEDs back in it because it just looks awesome with the LEDs in it. It's a colorful play field and it really needs the LEDs in it to, to showcase what the play field really looks like. Board set uh, doesn't have acid damage from what I can remember and I, I looked at it a little bit ago before I uh, started the video that and I have an NVRAM in it. I did replace and put that in last time. And uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was the, the blanking circuit that was bad on it. And I had got that resolved. But now it's acting up again. And I'm not sure if it's the, the blanking circuit again or if it's the reset circuit. Now when I turn it on, uh, I just have two solid lights on my MPU. And I'll look that up and see what's going on. And see if I can uh, get an idea where I should start looking. Uh, I'm going to put it on the bench. Uh, I'll get it set up with the, the power supply so I can work on it uh, powered up on the bench. And run all my tests on my... PIAs and my all my um, ROMs or EPROMs, whatever you want to call them on the MPU. I can run all that, make sure we got signals to everything and we'll be able to kind of get it pinpointed down as to what it is. I did change the uh, 40 pin female plugs on the uh, driver board. If you're not familiar with the Williams system, the Williams uh, systems one through I think it's six or seven uh, the you have your MPU and your driver board plugs right into the bottom of your MPU and those pins the males get dirty but the females usually uh, get are the worst so if you usually you change the females and then when you plug you know you get your signals back uh, usually that's a big problem with uh, those older systems one through six we're just going to say one through six for right now because i've never seen a seven i think they're pretty similar i'm not positive if they plug into the mpu like the one through six so um we'll start there everything should be okay there but we'll check our signals coming off of our mpu and see if we have signals uh, going to that plug and then on the other side of the plug and then we can Because a lot of times uh, What I run into the last time I worked on that is if you had a bad PIA or something like that down on your driver board uh, The MPU wouldn't boot you would uh, just get the uh, Signal the the lights would just come on the two red lights your LEDs would come on and that that that's all you'd get so it could be uh, we have something bad down on the driver board. That one, that driver board, when I redid that one, that one's really in good shape. It's not really heat damaged real bad. Uh, you'll see it when I once I get it out on the bench here and we'll, we'll take a peek at it. Uh, all my fuses were good and all that. I already kind of went through all that real quick to just to, you know, make sure we have our voltage coming off of our power supply board and all that so uh, it's it's on the MPU or in the driver board we'll get her we'll get that figured out and get that straightened up but I'm gonna get started on that this week and hopefully I'll have that resolved on Sunday and then I can kind of clue you in or fill you in on what I found and what what's going on with it and then I'll there will be a video on it probably the following week. Uh, there's some other projects that I do want to uh, get started to here. Because uh, when I get started on the MPU, I'll, I'll have it on the bench and I, it'll work. I'll work on it and then I need something else to do to take my mind off of it so I can kind of clear my head and start thinking about uh, what the problem could be. Sometimes if I go away from stuff for a little bit and do something else for a little while, then it kind of comes to me that, oh, I need to check. And then I'll come back and, and check that and see what's going on. 
that way. So I have a, another project that I'm going to start this week. It's uh, the one that I had been talking about, the uh, uh, scanner using a uh, Xbox 360 Connect. That one's going to take me quite a bit to do that video. I do, I did get a handle on it, and it, it's working pretty good, I think. Uh, I did some, you know, experimenting and some tests and stuff like that, and kind of figured out what worked the best for me. And I got, got it down pretty good. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to start a video on it, and I'll show you what. What I have, you know, like I said, this this is kind of a, a project that you can do at home. If you have an Xbox 360 Connect, you can kind of kind of work this stuff in and play around with a 3D, using it as a 3D scanner, and it works pretty good, I think. It's another another one that's a lot of seat time in front of the computer. Uh, you know, just working with uh, K-Scan, that's the program that I'm using. There's another uh, form of uh, the form of 3D scanning that you can use, not a scanner, but you can use a camera, and that's photogrammetry, where you can, uh, you take a bunch of pictures, you know, all the way around it, and then you can meld them all together and, and get your, your 3D uh, scan that way, but most of those programs to uh, do photogrammetry is uh, pay. You have to pay to pay to play on those. So uh, I used uh, K Scan, and I used everything that I had here in the sh in the garage to play around with uh, doing a 3D scan. You know, I'd love to have a uh, one from from 3D Maker Pro, man. Those ones really, really get the detail. You can get detail down with the 360 scan or connect, but it it's not as good as just a regular 3D scanner. So I'm going to do that project this week too, or at least get started on it, and I'll work on it off and on as as I'm working on uh, Scorpion. And then once that's out of the way, I get that done and get that played with enough. <laughs> I'm going to pull uh, top 10 play field over here and put it on, uh, put it on my uh, play field. <laughs> God, I hate that. just drew a blank. <laughs> my play field stand. I'm going to put it on it and get started on it so I can get the, get the, uh, uh, man, so I can get it out there on YouTube and people can check it out and see what I'm looking for and maybe they can help me out on finding some parts for Top 10 because it's a, it's a, it's a neat machine by Chicago Coin. Like I said, I think it's a 70, I thought it was a 73, but I think it's a 75 or 76. About the same era as cinema that we have over at the arcade. Uh, and I told you before, arcades all shut down, so there's nobody around. We were just sitting over there. But uh, we'll get that up too, and I'll get the cabinet uh, unburied and bring it out here too so we can look at it and I can start uh, uh, tracing designs tracing the art on it and the headpiece the back piece and start getting those my stencils made for it uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to paint this winter in here or not I don't know if I can get it warm enough in here to to paint, uh, but I can do play fields because I can set my little heater up uh, on the play field and heat the play field up as I'm painting. But to do the cabinet and the, the back box, I don't I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it warm enough in here to paint. Uh, I have to have a really warm January or February. <laughs> 
But the biggest thing is to get the play field out here and just start, start that series so people can see what I'm working on and what I'm looking for and what I'm what I need to do. And that'll be that'll be a fun project. I, I enjoy doing them from the ground up like that. When you get them in and they're just totally trashed. I have another one over in storage. It's all the way back in the stinking corner and I just last time I was over there I seen it. It's um it's a Gottlob. I think it's a big Indian. I think it's a big Indian. It's been so long since I stuffed it in there. But it's another uh, basket case. I mean, it, it that one's rough as well, and I, I really want to get it out, but I have other ones in front of it to, to do first. Uh, like Black Pyramid, I want to get it back over here. i got to redo the play field on it. Uh, uh, that one, another one, I did that when I was in town, and it just it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, so that's going to be another one that we're going to do, and that is another fun game to play, is Black Pyramid. And it's a good looking machine too. But we'll get it over here too. I think that's an 84 Bally. I think uh, Black Pyramid's a 1984 Bally. Uh, I built some displays for it from Wolfpack. I uh, put a new sound, sound board in it. And I think I even put a new um, MPU in that one. You know, that one's everything in the back box is ready to go. You know, it, it's all updated and, and working good. I think I have one display that I had to put a six-digit display in it, and Black Pyramid takes a seven-digit display, and it's in the fourth player. So we'll, uh, I think I have, uh, I'll have to go through my box out in, the, out in the warehouse, but I think I have a couple sevens I can uh, rework and get a seven up and running for on it, too. But the play field is, is the big, big deal big issue. It had a lot of planking and had a lot of peeling. The It had gotten damp and the play field, the, the plywood was starting to delaminate from itself. So it, like I said, it, it's, it's rough. Uh, I got it smoothed out decently and it was playable, but I want to see if we can't uh, Excuse me. See if we can't work it a little better and make it better yet. It was a lot of pulling up, injecting glue, and weighting down on that one. And that may be what we have to do some more. But we'll see. Then Vagabond over there, I, I kind of touched on it a little bit the other last... I think last Sunday or whatever, maybe in one of my videos. Yeah, I have a little 10 cent machine called Vegabond. It's an Attaball. And it it's uh I reworked it too, the play field and that. The play field's good on that. It's got a brand new back glass in it. Uh, I need to work on some switches in the back box from what I can remember. And the cabinet needs redone. And that mach that little machine really will look sharp when it's it's completed. I painted the, the coin door. Uh, I got the Mac for it and everything from from Steve up at uh, Pinball Resource. Uh, he found a, a 10 cent Mac for me and I got the Mac, the door all put together with the right mechanism in it. So it, it does. It takes times. Yeah. And it, it's really a neat little game. Uh, that one probably won't go over to the arcade. That one may go in on my deck, and that may be my 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 little fun machine. The only thing I don't like is it's got them stupid little two-inch stunners on it. God, I hate them flippers. I hate them little things. Huh. Anyway, uh, so we'll I can get that over here too. Those are all. Those two are sitting right at the front, ready to come over. Once I make some room in here. <laughs> but maybe we can get some, make some room in here and get another project in here or two. 
Uh, still working on cleaning in here. Uh, I kind of gave that up for a little while to get some videos done and get some of these projects uh, moving forward and and getting a little better area for the coffee break so we you're not just looking at a mountain of crap behind me and my toolbox all piled for for chit. At least now you got my nice little sign back there. You can look out the window. Got my computer sitting over here. Uh, what a CAD program on it, yeah. Just something different. Looks better. Makes it look like I care about <laughs> about the coffee break, which I do. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing this week and upcoming. So I think it's about time for me to take another break. Uh, I love these little breaks coffee gets cold. Maybe I'll make another cup of coffee and and we'll talk some more when I come back. Alright. Uh, we're, uh, like I said, I have a few um, game systems I want to work on. I have a PC engine that I bought at an auction. Uh, all I got was the PC engine itself. Uh, it has the CD player and the cartridge game on it. Uh, I have the CD, I found the CD games that I have for it, but I can't find my cartridge games. They're floating around in here somewhere, and once I locate them, we're going to get that up on the bench. I have tested it a little bit, and there's no power, no power to it. So that'll be a good little project there to do, uh, and a fun one. I have my 360 in the house that I haven't booted up for probably four or five years. I want to bring it out. It's an old white one and it still worked. Still worked when I put it away. So I want to bring it out and make sure it's still working. If not, we'll kind of go through it and, and see if it needs anything. Uh, kind of going over a few of my game systems to make sure they're all working. Uh, my Switch is kind of in pieces all over the stinking place. It was one of those that uh, when I had the store that I get a piece in every now and then. You know, somebody come in and, hey, I have a docking station for a Switch, and I'd buy it. And I bought the Switch itself that was just the Switch, the tablet and that was all that was with it. Uh, so I just kind of slowly been putting everything together and I have that I want to put up on the bench and make sure it's, it works. Uh, my Wii U, uh, I need to work on it. It hasn't been turned on since I I put it um, on, the, on the stand under the TV. That thing same thing about four or five years since the last time it was turned on and we'll see if it works uh, I know my Xbox One works uh, my PS4 works my GameCube works uh, the other one I want to bring out is my original Xbox and uh, make sure it's still working because it seems like those uh, original Xboxes from them sitting they, they get kind of stupid and don't want to work I had quite a few of them over at the, over in my other warehouse that uh, worked when I put them in there, but now they don't. Uh, they seem to, the battery in them, there's a, uh, it's not a super cap, but it is a, a, a capacitor looking that saves the charge and saves your settings and all that. And they, it's just like a battery, they puke out and pfft, all over the board and eat up the eat up the board you know man that's what happened to a lot of those I still have probably 15 or so of them over there to, to test out and every one of them I bring over just that same thing red red flashing light or red green whatever or orange orange red and orange green and no just haven't had very good luck with uh with them sitting over there. They just don't like to sit. 
uh, but my my original Xbox I have the portable screen on it and I don't know if I have the power supply anymore for it but it was kind of neat you had your original Xbox then I had this little and then there's this little screen that uh, sits on top of it that kind of uh, clamps down onto it and then you can open it up and you can play it kind of like a portable <laughs> Uh, you could, you know, take it out on the porch or whatever and sit there and play on this little itty bitty, I think it's about a seven or an eight inch screen that's on it. I mean, it, it, it was really weird back in 2001 when they came out. But yeah, I want to bring it out and make sure it's still working. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I'm going to go through some of my stuff as well to make sure it works. Uh, that, that'll be upcoming. You know, that, that's later on down the road. I, I'd rather, right now, I'd rather work on my arcade stuff or, or work on uh, the 3D, doing some 3D printing stuff. But the PC Engine, I'd really, I'm really interested in that. I've never, never had one working to see what uh, the PC Engine is all about. So I'm going to I want, I'm going to do that one here pretty soon. We'll, we'll get it, dive into that and have some fun with it and see if it, see if we can't get it working. Yes, cold. It's about 24 degrees out here today. Uh, let's see, Ann. If you're not familiar with uh, TNT Amusement, uh, Todd Tuckery, he owns TNT Amusement. He's having his uh, auction tonight on TNT Amusement front slash live. He sells a lot of arcade parts and pinball machine parts. That's where I've bought a lot of my extra parts and uh, bought boards, arcade boards from him uh, that's in a tote, in totes over there that uh, when we have time and I feel like doing it, we'll pull some of them out. That, that was the whole reason that I built that uh, JAMA board tester way back when over the summer or last winter or whatever so we could work on work on some of those boards I have some of them that work uh, I've tested all of them and now we have some of them that don't work and those ones we can go through and see if we can't get them working I have a good <laughs> a neat um, what do you want to call it a uh, I guess digital slot machine board that uh, when you win you know you can double up or whatever and if you win doubling up or whatever the woman starts undressing <laughs> it, it's it's a neat neat game uh, that one works I uh, got some dead pixels in it so we have to go through or sprites, whatever you want to call them. I have some funky sprites on it, so we have to go through and see if we can't figure out what what's going on there. But that one, it does work. Um, run and gun. Uh, I have run and gun over there. It does work. But anyway, I am got off on that. But he, but he has an auction about every three weeks or so, every two weeks. This is his first one for... Uh, 2024. Uh, last night I briefly looked. Uh, he does have a box of displays, ballet displays, that I would. Uh, I've bought boxes of them before from him, and I have them out in the warehouse. That's why I said I have a couple seven digits for Black Pyramid. The seven digits are a little harder to come by. Everything, most of the ballet stuff is all six digit, but some of them were seven. Uh, and what else does he have? Oh, he, bags of pinball rubbers. Don't forget your rubbers. Um, but a lot of big ones for mainly uh, the old EMs. So if you're really into uh, EMs, you can buy like a hundred, hundred bag, a bag of hundred rubbers. In fact, that might be on the site. Buy it now for like 35 bucks. I have two bags of them. 
and trust me, I use them. You do. There's enough stuff in there that you can use. Uh, they might be a little yellowed, but, you know, that that's all right. They're new. They're not falling apart. Uh, and, I don't know what the hell else. He, a lot of older arcade boards. I mean, some Bronze Age stuff, what they call Bronze Age, uh, and always Pac-Man uh, asteroids, and there's always he always has a lot of that stuff. But you know, if you if you're interested, go check him out tonight. I think it's at seven o'clock, and you can see what he has, and you know, you register, and hey, you might want to bid on something. Uh, I kind of got started with uh, pinball again through Todd. I I was interested in pinball machines when I was in at the store and I wanted to find a couple of them and put them in the in the store in there just for people to play when they came in and I just was going through marketplace just like everybody does and I uh, found a couple of them and then but uh, it wasn't what I really wanted and then I found Todd on TNT Amusements on YouTube and he has a best offer sale, or best offer, bargain, no, bargain basement sale. I think he just had one, where he goes through and marks all his crap down, and he had two pinball machines there that I was really interested in, which was a uh, Gottlieb Soccer and Monte Carlo, Bally Monte Carlo. The soccer is one that I've been looking for, because that was one I played brand new as a kid. I mean, I played the hell out of soccer. It was a, it's a fun game. Uh, Super soccer is okay, but the, but reg, original soccer, the one with the one set of uh, soccer balls that come up. Super soccer has two of them, and so I found out what he wanted for him. He told, you know, obviously with the uh, bargain basement sale, he said what he wanted, and I called him, told him I wanted them, and drove down and picked them up. And that's kind of how I got started again with pinball machines. Because once I got those two back and started working through them, I was really, I was in heaven. So I, that, it kind of snowballed from there. I just keep, when I have them, the funds, I, I buy pinball machines and, and go through them, put them in the arcade. You know, at some point the arcade will be too small and I'll have to add on to the arcade and so I could put more more machines in. Space time, I went up to Cleveland and got that. That was a basket case. There was no back glass in it, uh, no glass in it. I mean, it was, it was bad. But I went up there, went up to Cleveland to another operator and bought that. It was like 200 bucks. Two or three hundred bucks brought that home. Got that, went through that one. Same thing. I was just in heaven ha having fun playing with the pinball machine. So now that's what I do. I love playing with the pinball machines. Granted, I there's other stuff that I have to do that I, I enjoy doing. Uh, the pachinko, I really enjoy doing the pachinko. The, uh, the arcades, uh, I enjoy the arcades, jukeboxes. The jukeboxes are a lot of fun to mess around with too. They're the mechanism's really interesting in those. So that you know really intrigues me. So I, I really enjoy doing jukeboxes too. But passion, love, pinball machines. Claw machines. Uh I wish I had more claw machines because they make a lot of money. <laughs> Kids just love playing the uh, claw machines. But it takes money. Uh, every time you get one in, you know you're looking at rubbers and just uh, your the rubbers and coils and you know light bulbs and you know that you, you get a kind of a, a little chunk of change in one. The EMs, uh, not quite as much, because most of that stuff is still good. You just have to go through and re-sleeve coils and, you know, and 
clean points and points and condenser. Uh, clean the points and score motor, score reels, you know, all that stuff. And you can usually get that stuff up and running. And with a, uh, you may have to buy uh, buy some leaf switches for it, so you can replace them because they they burn through every uh, once in a while. You get the head of it to burn off of it, so you got to replace it. But rubbers and light bulbs, and lots and lots of cleaning. So the EMs, EMs are probably a little cheaper route. Solid states, uh, if you can save the boards, you can save money. But a lot of these machines, a lot of the machines have been sitting, you know, the ones from the 80s, late 70s, 80s, up into the 90s. A lot of that stuff has been sitting for so long and nobody took the batteries out of the MPU, so you got acid damage, you know, and you can save the boards and get them working, but eventually uh, that acid damage will rear its ugly head again, and you'll be back into it, cleaning it again. It's fun to, to go through the boards and get the board set working again, uh, but for it to be reliable, and last for years without you having to screw with it again. Uh, new MPUs. Soundboards not so much because you know you don't have a uh, you know no battery so you don't have acid damage. And same with your driver board, your light board and all that stuff. You know it's just uh, MOSFETs, transistors, you know caps on the uh, power supplies and stuff like that. You can get all that stuff done and it's reliable and up and running and reliable again. It's the MPU is the one that takes the abuse when the batteries puke out all over it and get them little green monsters just eating, eating, eating traces and, and components. <clears throat> so you, you're better off to buy a new one if you can. Uh, if you don't have the money right away, uh, you can get that one, fix it all up and get it back up and running and just, but just remember that somewhere down the line eventually you're probably going to have to buy a new one. I'm not going to say you have to, but you may have to, depending on how bad the, the damage is on them. You can never get rid of all of it. There's always some of it left somewhere in the eyelets or a component that you didn't change that was uh, that you thought was clean and was off the damaged area, but it it the alkaline just kind of follows traces and got up into that component too, and then eventually it'll it'll eat that component up, or and it'll start getting back down on the board and crawling across it and chewing up your traces again. And that's what happened with uh, Sharky Shootout. You know, it, it was kind of confined, looked like it was confined in this small area right under the battery, right under the batteries. So I, I stripped that all down, cleaned that all up, and the backside didn't look bad, but once I hit it with um, alcohol and vinegar, uh, traces disappeared. So then I was putting uh, new traces in. Video is up on uh, Sharky Shootout when I worked through that that uh, MPU. And it, that's a, it's a massive MPU on that one. That, you know, because it's a newer one. It's a 2001, so it, there's a lot more that that MPU and driver board has to do than on just our regular little, our older Bally's and Williams and stuff like that. So I had to replace a bunch of traces on it, and I got it up and running, and it lasted all summer, and then here towards the end of the summer, it started acting up again, doing the same, you know, doing pretty much the same thing as what it was doing when I got started on it. So, and so I didn't get it all, you never do get all of it cleaned off. That's what I'm trying to say, is you never get it all cleaned off, and then eventually it will rear its ugly head and act up again. It may not be doing the exact same thing as it was before, but it may start doing something different. 
So to be reliable, where you don't have to mess with it for years, you buy a new MPU. Uh, that's a white star, and it, it's pretty, pretty expensive to buy that one. That's why I worked it over and, and got it up and running, and I'll do it again. I will rework that MPU and get that one back up and running again. And maybe I'll get another summer, and maybe this year it'll be a lot better, and I can buy a new, new MPU for it, and then I can just put that one off, put that one in the parts bucket. Parts box. But, uh, kind of going off and on all over the place here. But anyway, if you're interested in um, buying some old arcade parts, boards, some pinball machine parts. He doesn't have a whole lot of pinball machine parts, but he, he, gets, he has some. Uh, TNT Amusements, Front Slash Live is the auction site, and you have to register, and... He'll confirm you. You're confirmed. And then you can bid on stuff. Uh, like I said, every... You know, you can look at them. Go to the... Blah. If you go to the TNT Amusements Front Slash Live, it, it will tell you, <clears throat> tell you when the next one is. If, you, if you're not... If you miss this one tonight... Uh, check in a couple of days and look at the site again and it'll tell you when the next one is and it's usually uh, he might be doing them every two weeks now uh, he waited quite a bit through the holidays so this is like I said first one of the year but and it's fun you can just you know you don't even have to buy you can sit there and talk with everybody and carry on and have fun and listen to him. Those guys have a lot of fun when they're doing the auction, so it's, it's kind of like a show, too. Kind of like dinner and a show. <clears throat> uh, let's see, I think, I think that's about it for this week. Kind of went over quite a bit of stuff. Hmm. But, I think that's enough. For today, for this episode of Sunday Coffee Break. <clears throat> and like I said, don't forget to check out my affiliate links and check out my merch page and see if there's anything you're interested in. Helps out the channel. And don't forget to hit the like button. That also helps out the channel an awful lot too. So until next week, next Sunday, everybody take care and have a great week. Until then, see ya. <laughs>